So you want to add some RNG into your game. Well, let's start with something that's easy. I've created this object and called it Spawn. And if I go into the event sheet, we'll create this event where at the beginning of scene, we'll create the ghost object at the X and Y position of the spawn object. And then use the condition, pick a random object, and then choose spawn. And now at the beginning of the scene, the game will pick either the left or right spawn object and create the ghost at the one that's picked. Now to go a little further, we can add a timer to this and change it so that at the beginning of the scene, the timer starts, and then after one second, the game will pick one of the spawner objects, reset the timer, and create a ghost object at the X and Y coordinates of the spawn object that was picked. And now if I move all of these over to the side, I've got the beginnings of a wave defense game. And you can also use this same method to create a game where you avoid things. We can use the exact same setup with a timer that counts and repeats, and then a subcondition for repeat for each instance of an object, in this case being the spawn object. And then we create the asteroid at each point, give it a force downwards, and then we check each one that's in collision with a spawn point, and pick one of them at random, and then delete that one, leaving us with a random open space to try and fly through. Now if you know the X and Y coordinates of the space that you're trying to spawn enemies in, you can also do this based on those coordinates. So if I go to the event sheet and get rid of this pick condition, I can go over to the create action and change its coordinates to random in range and use the furthest X on both ends and the same with the Y's to create a rectangle where enemies will spawn. But you really want to have a spawn animation if you're going to do this because otherwise enemies will just spawn on top of the player and it will feel really unfair. Next, we're going to take it up a notch again. We will be spawning objects in a level using the spawn point system, but deleting the spawns afterwards. If we go to the event sheet, you'll see what I mean. So it's basically the same event where at the beginning of scene, we pick a random box spawning object and then create a box at the point of that object. But then we delete the object and we have this in a repeat condition set up to repeat three times. And then we do the same thing for the trunk and B. And then at the bottom of this event, we pick all of all three objects and then delete them to clean up all of the ones that weren't picked. And that looks like this. I can reset the scene over and over and over again, and you'll see that the enemies and boxes are all spawning in different places. And this can be used to make the same level in a game feel different. Like in Stardew Valley, where the layout of the mines are pre-built, but where the rocks and enemies spawn are randomized. And now we're going to get a little more advanced. I've set it up so that the box object breaks when you shoot it, and it's going to spawn either an apple, orange, or strawberry based on a randomizer variable that gets picked when its hit animation finishes. So just before it gets deleted, it will pick one, two, or three, and then create either an apple, orange, or strawberry. And you can use this system to have randomized loot or rewards for killing enemies or breaking objects in your game. But you can use this to create bundles of different effects or things that happen based on that randomizing number. And speaking of Stardew Valley, creating a room and then randomizing where everything is inside of the room, we can do something similar in GDevelop with external layouts. Open the project manager, click to add an external layout, open that layout and link it to the scene, and then build a level inside of that layout. We can use those spawner objects again because it uses the events from the scene we're going to load it into. We go back to the main scenes event sheet, where we create an event where at the beginning of the scene, we change a scene variable to equal random in range one to three and do the same thing that we did with the randomized fruit. So if the scene variable is equal to one, we'll use the action create objects from an external layout, select the layout and then set them both to zero because our current scene is empty. And then we set it up so that if the randomizing variable is two, it spawns room number two. And if it's three, it'll spawn our external layout room number three. And this is what that looks like. Each time we reset the scene, we'll have one of those three external layouts get created within the scene. And then we'll be using the spawner objects to pick where things spawn within the level. Now, if you want to learn how to deal damage to those enemies, watch the next video. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe.